Hey, it's Catherine again. The exterior was complete. Finally, we could get started on the interior. We used some wood filler in the small gaps and holes and sanded them down, prepping them from painting. As we mentioned earlier in step two, the roofers used nails that were too long and poked through the plywood walls. We had to cut all the nails flush to the wall using an oscillating tool. We did this for all the lower sections, but decided it was okay if the ceiling still had nails. We had to wear masks when using it because we didn't want to breathe in the metal dust. Teresa had an idea of how she wanted to paint the walls, but we decided to have the whole family vote. It took a lot of negotiating, but we finally decided on two colors. White for the trim and studs and wall shelves and warm soft pink for the walls. We painted the walls first. An annoying part of painting the walls was the nails that we left in the ceiling. The paint collected on the nails. Then it occasionally surprised us by dripping down on us while we were painting. At one point, I even got paint in my hair. Are you still video? <laughs> yeah. I like your uh, work shoes, Catherine. <laughs> We didn't do each step of this process in any particular order. We all worked on many parts simultaneously. I, I did the top of here part. After finishing the walls, we put painter's tape up to help us paint the trim and the framing in white. Once we finished painting, without a doubt, the best step was pulling off the painter's tape to reveal the clean finished look 